Hi, this is Anne with Fiber Designs by Anne, and today we're going to cover glass votives with fabric coils. The first one we'll be making is white, and it, the coils will be attached to the votive. All that's going to require is a glass votive, a variety of sizes of the fabric coils, some craft glue, and you might want to use a needle quilling tool as well. For the second votive, we're going to build it on a piece of freezer paper. So you'll need a piece of freezer paper, a little piece of parchment paper, a hot dry iron, and again craft glue, and you may want to use your quilling needle. And you'll need a variety of sizes of the fabric coils, colors and sizes. I wanted to talk a little bit about the fabric that we're going to use. When I make these coils, I use strips of usually my hand-painted fabric, but a batik fabric works really great too. Much better than uh, thicker and regular cotton fabrics. You want it to be colored all the way through and not to have just a print on the top of the fabric. Also, even though I've Terial magic this, which is to stiffen it with spray stiffener, the coils can still do a little bit of fraying. It depends on how straight a grain the cut was, and I don't care about that. If I cared, I guess I would use paper, but I want to use my fabric, and so if it frays a little, I'm fine with that. Just realize that even though it's stiffened with Terial Magic, it may still fray. To me, that just adds more personality and depth to the coils. I like it a lot. I do use a fine cotton fabric for a number of reasons. For one reason, I can use my own fabric that I've hand painted. If you dye fabric, that would be a nice fabric to use as well. I like to be able to use a gradated fabric. It gives the coils a lot of depth with the different uh, colors and values. Um, and it's a tighter weave fabric, which means that it will go into my little slotted tool much easier. So that's about the fabric. And these coils are made the same way I make the coils and made the coils for my napkin rings and I'll link to a video for how I made the napkin rings. Now we're going to start with a whole bunch of coils. I just sit and make the coils. It's relaxing and fun. To make the largest coils, these are about three quarters of an inch, I use a strip. What I usually do is glue a few strips together. These end up being uh, three strips and it's about 36 inches long. To make these little tiny, tiny coils that are kind of like a seed bead, I use a strip that's about an inch long or an inch and an eighth long. And then everything in between to get all these different sizes. Now to make the coils that are attached to the glass votive, candle votive, and I only use flameless candles with these, I can use a votive that had an old candle in it and I can put it in the freezer and pop that candle out or the leftovers, leavings of that candle out. Or I can purchase little votives like this. And they're a little bit uh, smaller, but it doesn't really matter. You could do any size. And I'll start by gluing a large coil on. And sometimes if the votive is too small, a coil might sort of be up, lifting up off the edge. I probably don't want to use that. It's a little too big for this small one. That would be better for a large piece. So I'll start with my largest pieces. And we're doing two different votives here. This one has the, the, the coils attached right to the glass. And the other one is built a different way. And that will be the next project in the same video. So I start with putting dabs of glue around the base, not in a row, you certainly could do them in a row, and then, and you want to be kind of generous with the glue, and I'll just continue with the largest coils, and move it around a little so that the glue is nice and under the entire coil, and then I'll just go on with the glue and go to the next smaller size and it just works best to continue on with one size and then go all the way around and then go to the smaller size and just build up. You could do the entire piece if you wanted to but I usually just stick it around at the bottom. It's kind of pretty when the candle's in there. And then when you get it all filled in like this one is, I might have some little places 
And that's when I would take the little tiny, let's see, here's a place, uh, stick a little glue in there. And the needle tool, which is here someplace, let me see, is sometimes helpful for this to just sort of squish the glue down in there a little bit. And also to pick up the little tiny, tiny beads, little tiny coils, I should say. And just push it down in those little spaces. And I'll continue all the way around until it's covered just to my liking. And then that piece will be finished and ready for a little tea light. Next we'll do the colored pieces that have it just above the glass edge. What you're going to need for this piece is a dry hot iron, a glass votive, a piece of parchment paper, and a piece of freezer paper. And I'll have the link or the information for the sizes. You're going to use the freezer paper with the shiny side out. So you set the glass onto the freezer paper on the dull side and you're going to put it as snugly as you can around the top part of the glass and then slide it up so that when you look inside there where my thumb just was it's about a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch right in there and it won't be even on this side and that's fine then you're going to lay your parchment paper on top and touch it with the iron be careful not to burn yourself and we're doing is getting the freezer paper to sticky sides to adhere to each other so it's closing off that seam then I'll make sure that's pulled snug again and I'll lay the parchment paper on top of that seam you don't want to get any of that sticky on your iron either so that's why we use the freezer paper and tack it down the rest of the way adhere it together so that there's not an open seam and the glue won't sink in there now I'm going to take oh you need regular scissors and later we'll be using sharp pointy scissors but right now use paper scissors and just kind of eyeball it and cut it so that that's the same distance from the edge top edge of the votive to the edge of where the paper is cut it doesn't have to be perfect because we're putting round things on there then because this is tapered we're going to slide it down so you can see how it's even all the way around slide it down and take it so that the seam is in the center and fold it in half and we're looking at the left side because I'm right-handed you would switch it if you're left-handed and we're going to cut it off so that this strips pretty much even and then again remember it goes in one way because it's tapered and then you're going to pull it up so it's snug onto the glass and then you're going to just be setting your coils on like that so now I have craft glue and if you made the napkin ring you know this is the same way we did the napkin rings only we used a tube instead of the glass and I'm just putting dots in varying places all the way around and use a generous amount of glue and I start with the largest coils and smush them around and on this one it's okay if the glue goes up the side because that will help the coils connect to each other once you're filling it in and I will place large ones all the way around and this can be really fast. I tend to take a while because I'm picky about the colors and then in the end I find out it doesn't matter what I cho have chosen. It ends up being pretty no matter what. So continue on with the large coils. And they you can move them for a little bit. The glue sets up after a few minutes. and then I'll put some more glue and I will go for the next size smaller and again just like the white candle I'll go all the way around or the white coils I'll go all the way around with the next size and then on this one to speed it up a little bit I'm just gonna go ahead and um, not necessarily go all the way around but just start adding them in and just wiggle them so that glue is nice and um, all the way around the bottom of it so it'll hold it securely and it's nice because if the glue's not quite set you can still wiggle them around and push them together so that they fill in a little bit better but once it sets up we'll be using smaller quills and I'll continue 
filling and moving them as I need to. And be generous with the glue, it won't hurt on this at all. Even if it gets on the top, it's okay. And then I can still shift them around, even the large ones shift them around at this point. Then I have these little tiny beads to fill in. <laughs> They're like beads, and you probably could use beads, but I'm using coils, these little tiny coils, to put in the little gaps. You can leave the gaps, the candlelight looks pretty through the gaps, but I like to put more, more uh, coils. And I'll continue filling in everywhere. Sometimes I decide to put a few more larger ones, but usually I just fill in with the little tiny ones. And sometimes it takes a little fiddling. If, if You can set it down even though it's got glue on the other side and use your both your hands. It's a little bit easier if you do it that way. And if there's not glue on your needle tool, that helps too. And just fill in all the little spaces. with some bigger pieces if necessary. If I had all, gone all the way around this probably I wouldn't be um, putting the next size down. That would already be finished and I'd be only putting in the little tiny ones. You can still shift them and move them and push them together. Sometimes I purposely make a little space for the smaller ones and usually I have to make more small, small coils because I decide to fill more in. So I did that and then I went all around the top just to make it look a little more um, even, the top line and the lower line. Let that dry completely, completely before you do this next step which is to remove the freezer paper. So at least overnight. And oh, I started at the seam and that wasn't a good idea because it was a little bit stuck there from the glue. So then I switched it and you'll find it be a lot easier if you try from a side where there's not the seam. And it comes off pretty easily. That shiny side just lets go of the glue. And if you used a good amount of glue, all the pieces will stay intact. I haven't had any of the pieces come off in all the times I've done this. And you just keep gently peeling it and then remove the freezer paper. And you have the nice coil ring. And I take sharp pointy scissors and if there's any glue sticking up, it just kind of clip it off. This makes it look a little bit neater. And then check the whole edge and do that wherever necessary. Then I'm gonna put a little glue on the inside. And I do this one time and then I let it dry and then I might do it again. You could also use, um, artist gel medium would probably work as well. This is just to give it a little more stability. I have made these right and then let that dry completely. I have made them um, and you could leave it just the way it is or if you want you can try nail polish clear nail polish to kind of give it a lacquer shiny coat or you could use a spray acrylic and uh, give it a nice finish that way it makes it a little stiffer but these are going on the glass so it's not that crucial and make sure you put it try it on uh, remember it's tapered slightly so make sure you try it on that way and to keep them up sometimes they'll just stay but if you want you can add a little glue around the edge of the glass doesn't take very much and I just smear it around. And just remember it's tapered so it won't go on one way. And you have to go through the bottom and make sure you slide it all the way up. And then kind of give it a push up so that it's nice and snug. And then rub around it. And let that dry. And it'll be ready to put a candle in. And by daylight it looks like this. And when the lights are out it will look like this and where there's not coils the little light shines through and it's very pretty. So by day or by night. The votives make a pretty table decoration. They also make a nice gift. So I hope you'll try this project and if you do let me know. Leave a comment and subscribe. This is Anne. Thanks a lot for watching.